Hi, my name is Genia. I'm a PM who looks after the entire Teams developer experience kind of end to end. And uh, here I want to talk to you a few minutes about the new Teams toolkit we released at Build. Uh, it's still in preview, uh, so there's lots more work to do, but we hope we have simplified um, some of the initial setup cost of creating a proof of concept type of application where hopefully it'll be clear for my demo. You no longer have to do some of the same steps manually. Um, now there's lots of uh, great ways to create a Teams app. Of course, it will continue to be true. The UI Teams generator is one. I'm sure there are tons of other uh, templates and samples from the community, as well as any of our own uh, samples and templates. Uh, but here, focusing on Teams Toolkit, some of the things we've done since the previous version we released last year is we have added um, essentially a big simplification to your authentication setup. We've done that by kind of collecting together the some of the lifecycle stages of an application into one set of commands in the tool chain. So you, you now get access to uh, hosting for your uh, custom tabs, your bots, and your Azure functions. We've integrated Azure functions uh, into the, the, the default template. Uh, we've also helped with the Microsoft Graph integration, as well as uh, data sources like SQL. Um, We've, we also make it easy to connect all of the above with uh, SharePoint Framework, if that's your cup of tea. Um, there, there is a set of commands for deploying in kind of a single, single step. You can deploy all of the components of your Teams application, whether it's the function, the front end, or, or the bots. Um, publishing is the same as before. Uh, you, you're able to submit to the Teams App Store straight from the tooling. Um, we have a new extensibility model I'll tell you about. Also a new CLI. Uh, this should help folks who love the terminal and folks who want to integrate these things into their CI CD flow. Uh, we also have new Blazor support as well. So we have the uh, we have an extension that you can install into Visual Studio uh, using the extension marketplace. Um, and it supports the Blazor, a Blazor app template that you can use to build a custom tab. Uh, lots more work to do. And we've also made it easier for you to, to work with our um, some of the tunneling uh, shenanigans you have to do when you're building a, a Teams bot. Um, so that's a quick overview. Uh, I'll show you some of these uh, in detail and show you a demo at the end of this as well. So the, the big, um, hopefully, simplification to your life when you're creating a, you know, a proof of concept or you're uh, trying to demonstrate an idea with a Teams app is we believe getting the user's profile information and the current SSO state shouldn't be something you have to configure, shouldn't be something you have to worry about. It should just be a single line of code. And so uh, you'll bear with me. We've, we've changed some of the signatures just a touch, but the, the real um, meat of this functionality is exactly the same where you, yeah, once, creating, uh, once you've created an app with our template, everything is set up for you to receive the user context with one line. This works both on the client and the server, and I'll, and I'll show you in the demo. Um, Azure Functions are integrated, and we, we kind of give it to you as a monorepo format where your, you know, your tab is sitting right next to your uh, Azure Function. This allows you to kind of share, share code if you want to. But uh, yeah, here's an example of what it's like to take advantage of your uh, single line graph integration, for example, directly from the um, Azure Function. Microsoft Graph also integrated in a similar fashion with a single line of code. You can generate yourself a authenticated graph client. Um, you'll notice here we don't have to pass in any client IDs or any tokens or scopes. This this uh, uses, of course, you can modify the scopes you like if you, you can override those arguments, but the, none, none of the kind of standard ways of configuring this are required because we've handled um, calling AAD for you. We've handled... Um, the deployment after this, and so the configuration is something that's uh, already built into the template. In terms of deployment, there's a single line command that you can use. Like I mentioned before, all the components you're using in your application, including potentially your SQL server, if that's the data source you chose to integrate um, through the toolkit, all of those things are provisioned and deployed in your Azure subscription for you automatically. We have our new extensibility model uh, behind a lot of these, behind all of the commands in the toolkit and in the CLI. Um, so some of the ones that you'll you'll notice are available. You know, you can scaffolding the application or building the application, uh, running it or deploying it. All of these are lifecycle events in our extensibility system, and you're able to package 
Um, in fact, this is how a lot of the integrations for the various resources we support have been built. Uh, so you're able to package functionality that knows how to listen to these lifecycle events, and that will enable folks to kind of integrate the rest of their line of business setup. If, you know, if, if they have an enterprise that has custom ways of doing things, this is this is your way to connect. Now, I think fancy animations. Um, we have uh, this new Blazor template which has all of the same kind of uh, authentication goodness that we give you on the on the JavaScript side. It, it's currently uh, a little bit lighter featured than the, the, the web uh, stack, but we're hoping to invest in this uh, and bring it to parity as well. Lots of things to do, but uh, yep, you're able to, to get your uh, user context and access to Microsoft Graph in one line of code. So uh, I'll, I'll move on to the demo now, but you can check out the um, Teams Toolkit at this URL, aka.ms slash teams dash toolkit. And that's kind of, this is how you start uh, accessing the, the toolkit, basically as you're used to through the extensions marketplace in, in VS Code. Uh, you'll notice in preview. But uh, once you get this installed, you'll get a little um, icon in the activity bar here under Teams Toolkit. Here you have access to uh, a whole bunch of things that are useful uh, for Teams development, including, for example, a link to your Teams developer portal where you can manage apps that you've deployed. Um, of course, a bunch of project commands for creating a project, you know, adding different capabilities and resources, um, looking at your manifest, you know, getting your app built and published. To to do to do the F5, uh, of course, the big the big features here are also that you can instantly F5. Uh, the, the same way you're used to any application. So I'll show you that in a second here. Let me show you what it's like, how quick it is to create a project. When I make a new project, I, I basically follow a few prompts, just like you're used to with any template generator. Um, so you could you could start with one of our new samples, uh, or I'll just start a blank app. Here, it, it, you know, we're we're planning to add more of the team's capabilities that, in, you know, as as time goes on. But in in preview, we have our core tab bot messaging extension choices. You can you can pick any of these to put together into your application. Um, so just for simplicity, I'll, I'll show you this first one for now. Um, you can choose how you plan to host. In this case, we have options. We can host with Azure or SharePoint framework. Um, I'll pick Azure. You can throw in a SQL database. We'll help you run a local database when you run locally in F5. Uh, and we'll help you, of course, provision that database in Azure. For now, I'll just throw in uh, an Azure Function app because I want some server-side code. Uh, pick my programming language of choice. Of course, TypeScript is mine. Uh, it's going to ask me to place my new fold, my new project, uh, in, into a folder, and I'll give it a name. And so, what this does is uh, it restarted with uh, looking at the, the the folder that I just created. Uh, you can see here, this is the Visual Studio getting started. Um, I don't know why this readme is not loading. I think that's a that's a funny bug we're, we're dealing with. So you have your, your tabs, um, you have your functions uh, all in, in multiple folders together. And the, the, the neat thing you can do is if you go into your run and debug, you can hit this button right away. And what it will do is launch Teams in Chrome. Uh, now, I won't make you wait through the initial NPM install because that does take a couple of minutes and we do a, a whole bunch of things in the background to, to get you started, including calling into um, Azure AD, making sure you have a, app ID registrations with the appropriate SSO setups. Um, so lots of steps to do. I'll just skip to um, kind of an application I've already got uh, running, uh, hopefully, uh, in, if, in case the demo gods will grace me today. Um, so you'll, I've created this app uh, just this morning. Actually, it has um, three things in it. It has the Azure function, the tab, and a bot all together. Uh, and it's currently running and debugging after I've, I've hit the F5. And what, what we did is we started up a whole bunch of tasks for you here, including the tunneling solution, ng-rock. Uh, and uh, for those folks who use this uh, with bot development, you'll, 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 know, you'll know that you have to kind of um, register with ng-rock to get yourself a permanent URL. Um, we we handle updating that URL for you with the free account. We started up your backend and frontend services and attached to a, a number of them for debugging. And I believe the Teams client uh, disappeared on me. I'll try to reloading and see if that works. But the idea is uh, 
once you've started your app, um, we start up this browser. And once you log in, um, you are able to see your, see your app and, and debug it. I might just give it another kick there. Uh, close, the, close the browser, stops my debugging session. And this should be a lot faster to restart uh, since I have done this already. Let's see how that does. So here we are updating um, the AAD setup because potentially our ngrock URL changed. You'll notice us starting both the front end and the back end server and trying to attach to a process. Now I'm going to go hunt for a, br a browser window on my machine here in case. It here we go. So Microsoft Teams uh, comes up with my prompt to install this application since to, to, the, to the tenant I'm in, this, this is a new application. Um, I would say add to get it uh, installed. You'll see here that it, it knows it's going to give me a tab, a bot, and a personal app. And once I do that, it pops me into the app. As you can see, I have those features available here. So the, the you know, looking at the tab, for example, uh, this sample demonstrates uh, awareness of your SSO token, obviously, um, as well as um, Microsoft Graph. We show you, you know, the single line auth um, flow. Of course, this is all, uh, you know, reloading in real time. So if I want to go in here and, and make some changes, uh, you know, and I, and I sort of save that. And I go back to this. Uh, it's it's pretty quick to rebuild. We're using the Create React App um, template, so uh, the incremental build is is fairly quick. We've also attached. So if you uh, if you if you are interested, you can debug both the front end and the back end just by setting a breakpoint here uh, in VS Code. I'll I'll reload this page inside here and hopefully hit that breakpoint. And here it is. Uh, same same debugger as you're used to. You have all your locals in state. I'll just let this thing go. Of course, it's going to re-render lots of times. Uh, we have a bot as well, of course. Uh, here, uh, it is also running and being tunneled into. And I can, I believe I can say hello. Whoops. I believe I can say hello or info. Um, I think it tells me, yep, this is, this is just a very uh, basic intro, it wants me to say. And uh, it returns, uh, you know, the adaptive card, and and it and you can you can say, yeah, give me my profile. And we've set everything up for the notorious bot SSO flow for you. So you'll hear, you'll see here that that is currently happening. I, I didn't have to do anything special beyond just scaffolding the project and hitting F5. Um, so I never went to Azure, I never went to AAD portal, um, and nor nor the bot service. We we've set everything up for you. Uh, so here we are calling the graph and getting your profile information. And of course, if I want to change this stuff, uh, you know, on the server, here is, here's a, what it looks like, uh, you know, in, in my Azure function, um, you know, I grab my access token, I create a behalf of user credential, and I'm able to get the user info directly from that and, and return that. Or uh, I'm able to go use that in my uh, Microsoft Graph generator uh, pass in some scopes and then make regular graph API calls uh, in kind of a single line statement here. Uh, so we're 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 getting close to time here. Uh, so I'll, I'll leave you with kind of a call to go try the toolkit. Let us know on Stack Overflow uh, any questions you have, any trouble you have running, uh, file issues on GitHub um, at this uh, URL I've given you here. Uh, aka.ms/teams-toolkit should take you to the extension marketplace where the GitHub repo should be. Uh, easy to find. Uh, folks, thank you so much, and I'll turn it back to you, Vesa. Excellent, Zenia. Really, really awesome stuff, and it's great to see how the, the toolkit has evolved, um, and it looks really, really, really smooth. Um, I love the fact that it handles the back end at the same time as the front end and the bot, so it's, it's really, really makes the development easier for sure.